In Albany, New York, lives a 14-year-old introvert boy named Duncan. His mom, Pam, has a boyfriend named Trent. He is a wealthy guy with a spoiled daughter, Steph. Trent frequently comments and acts rudely to him, while Steph has always been a daddy's girl and arrogant like her dad. One time, Trent brings the whole family out of town on a summer vacation. Duncan is reluctant to join, but he has no choice. He sits alone in the backseat, near the trunk. On the way to the beach house, Trent checks on Duncan to see if he is asleep. Hearing Trent's voice, Duncan feels his personal space is intruded by nonsense interrogation. Trent asks him to rate himself from 1 to 10. Duncan is unsure, replying he doesn't know in a soft voice. Trent gets irritated why he can't give the figures he already provided. He stresses the importance that one should have an opinion about himself. Silence fills the atmosphere because Duncan is staring blankly, thinking of something. Trent raises his voice to get his attention. This time, he is forcing the boy to pick a number. Duncan replies, 6, surprising Trent. He disagrees, saying he is only at 3. Duncan feels bad about himself even more for how the man belittles him. He lets him choose a number, but in the end, he insists he's only 3. Trent asks him if he knows the reason for his rate. Duncan replies, no, in a soft voice, pissing off Trent. He raises his voice, explaining he is 3 because he rarely goes outside and mingles with the kids his age. Trent's beach house is the best place to stay for Duncan. There are plenty of kids with whom he can bond. He promises it will be enjoyable for the happy and complete family he dreams of them. Trent challenges him to increase his self-rating and be the best version of himself. Trent indeed sounds caring in words, but Duncan can't feel it in his actions. The boy wears his headset to drown Trent's annoying voice. After a long drive, they arrive in a small seaside town near Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Before the beach house, they pass by a local water park, Water Whiz, catching Duncan's attention. It looks fun, and the water activities include giant slides. At the intersection, a man in a convertible car stares at Duncan. He makes him feel uncomfortable but soon after he smiles, Duncan realizes he is friendly. They part ways because the man turns in another direction. Soon after arriving at the house, Steph gets the keys from her dad. Trent gives them without hesitation. Meanwhile, Duncan looks at the home with curiosity. Pam kisses her son's shoulder, making him feel at ease in the new environment. While Trent unloads the things, a woman screams, enthusiastically greeting them. She is Betty, a sociable and drunkard neighbor. Betty is a good friend of Trent and is extremely happy to see him again with the whole family. Betty hugs Trent and notices he still drives his dad's car. She also greets Pam, making jokes to light up the mood. Betty loves Pam instantly because of her sense of humor. Meanwhile, Duncan awkwardly stands behind them, shy to speak up. A teenage girl stands on the porch, curious after hearing her mom's loud laughs. She is Susanna, Betty's daughter, who catches Duncan's attention. Their eyes met, but they do not smile or talk. Betty calls her daughter, informing Trent has arrived with his new girlfriend, Pam. Susanna does not respond, so Betty just let her be. The slouching Duncan gets noticed by Betty. By seeing his posture, she can tell he is shy. Duncan only stares at Betty, not giving a smile as she greets him. Because of that, Pam is the one who introduces him to Betty. Meanwhile, Trent continues to unload the things, throwing a heavy and large bag at Duncan. The poor boy catches it without complaining. Since Duncan doesn't talk, Betty finds Steph instead, who is busy preparing for the beach, according to Trent. Betty is excited to see her mini version. She proudly shares to be as pretty and sexy as Steph, flaunting beach bodies under the sun. All of them head inside the house, and Duncan follows after. Talkative Betty shares how her winter went. It was bad because her niece suffered injuries. Not only that, Bob, her ex-husband, confessed he is gay, and her son is into addictive substances. Betty apologizes for Susanna's behavior earlier. It's concerning because she is in the I hate mother phase, agreeing with her father most of the time. Steph getting some beer catches Betty's attention. Her outfit looks cute, but it's too revealing for Trent. Betty returns, talking about her family, and this time it's Peter, her youngest. She can pay for the surgery on his lazy eyes. However, it worsens, so Betty forces him to wear an eye patch. After keeping beers, Steph asks permission to leave. Trent suggests it's better to bring Duncan to the beach. Steph complains, refusing to babysit him throughout the summer. Duncan prefers staying at home but seeing his mom and Trent kissing forces him to go with Steph. While heading to the beach, Steph warns Duncan to keep distance from her. She doesn't want to be humiliated by her friends because of him. Poor Duncan follows, walking slowly behind his stepsister. Steph boasts to the girls that she can host a party anytime at the beach house. She shares about her dad, permitting her to do anything to make her happy. Her friends envy her perfect life. Meanwhile, Susanna, who hates mingling with mean girls, lies nearby, ignoring the proud Steph. Instead of gossiping, she prefers reading a book peacefully at the shore. Steph calls Chad, her boyfriend, to go with her in the water. Chad refuses, explaining he is busy playing with the boys. Steph is forced to go with friends instead. The girls wonder about Duncan, who is sitting nearby. Steph humiliates him, saying he and his mom lived in a one-bedroom apartment before her dad saved them from poverty. Duncan pretends not to hear it while playing in the sand. Steph calls Susanna to go with them, leaving Duncan alone. On the way to the house, Duncan meets Betty with her son Peter. Duncan is confused if Peter is looking at him or on the side. 
Betty apologizes, informing him her son has lazy eyes. Duncan feels sorry but remains awkward during the conversation. Betty is the one talking, inviting Duncan to hang out with Peter. She suggests they should play the Star Wars doll collection. Peter corrects her saying those are not dolls but action figures. Duncan tells them he will ask first for his mom's permission. Betty agrees, but after he leaves, she lectures her son for not wearing the eye patch. Betty says his eyes make people uncomfortable, so he must hide them. Peter is hurt by telling her mom she is the worst parent. Duncan lays on the roof of Trent's car, singing Rio Speedwagon's hit Can't Fight This Feeling. He sings out of tune, hearing the song through the headset. Little did he know, Sasana was standing for seconds, hearing his off-key voice. When Duncan realizes someone is there, he is embarrassed and jumps off the car. The married couple, Kip and Joan, visits Trent and Pam. Joan, the bubbly among the four, keeps dancing to the beat. She keeps pulling Trent from the kitchen to dance with her. Trent is busy preparing food for their drinking session while Pam sets up the table. Pam laughs at Joan, roaming around the house, high-spirited. Joan sees the awkward Duncan, pulling him to the dance floor. Feeling uncomfortable, Duncan calls his mom. Pam joins Joan dancing, so Duncan also grooves awkwardly in the middle of them. Soon after, Steph goes out of the room, asking permission to leave. Steph gets two bottles of liquor, telling her parents she will have dinner with friends later. Trent sits in the living room, asking Duncan if he sat on the car's roof earlier. He found a large dent but was done popping it out. Trent let it pass, and Duncan denies he went there. Joan lays on the sofa, watching Pam busy setting up. She asks her if there is something she can do to help. Pam refuses, telling her to relax because their system in the kitchen with Trent is working well. Trent agrees, hugging Pam. Joan envies the two for being sweet before her. Everything is set, and they dine at the elegant table Pam prepared. Duncan is also there, behaving silently like he always does. The talkative Joan recalls how she slept in the dune after being drunk. Pam joins in the chat, but she eventually feels shy. The atmosphere becomes awkward, so Trent breaks the silence to save Pam from embarrassment. He shares how Pam loves catering, which explains why she knows how to set up the table like fine dining. She also loves to design and plans for a minimal renovation to the beach house. Kip and Joan are impressed by Trent's meeting an amazing woman. Pam sees her son bored with the conversation. She allows him to exit and do the things he wants. Duncan is relieved to escape the misery finally. However, Trent calls him to bring his plate to the sink and clean his mess. Duncan feels like an outcast everywhere he goes. He decides to stay on the porch for fresh air. Duncan sees Sasana, and Betty is lecturing her for not closing the screen door. Pissed off, Sasana bangs the door, making her mom call out her alarming behavior. Duncan pretends to look away when his eyes meet Sasana's. The lady greets him, forcing himself to remain composed and talk to her. Duncan apologizes, telling her he does not intend to eavesdrop on her argument with Betty. Sasana is okay with it, and asks him if he likes Rio Speedwagon. Duncan feels shy, confirming she heard him singing earlier. He stutters, explaining it's his mom's favorite. Eventually, the conversation gets awkward for Sasana. She feels Duncan is uncomfortable talking to her too. Sasana is heading inside when Duncan continues the conversation. He predicts it's going to be a hot summer. Sasana turns around to hear him out. However, Duncan talks awkwardly again. Sasana understands him, telling him she's inside if he wants someone to talk to. The next day, Duncan wakes up seeing the mess in the kitchen. Steph looks in the fridge for a beer but finds nothing. She is pissed off that they drank all the liquor last night. Duncan sees the home is boring, so he roams around the house. He finds a pink bicycle in a storage room and uses it to explore the town. For the first time, Duncan smiles genuinely, looking around at the beautiful sight. Duncan stops by a diner to buy soda. While quenching his thirst, a man playing Pac-Man catches his attention. Duncan goes nearer to the machine, where the guy requests him to stay on the side because his shadow is bothering him. Duncan apologizes, but the man says he has nothing to feel sorry for. It's just that it's his first time reaching the game's cherry level. Duncan likes his humor also because he is a Pac-Man lover. However, men in sky blue shirts call him, telling him the lunch break is over. The guy has no choice but to give up on the game. He still has another life, so he lets Duncan use it. He jokingly tells the boy not to go beyond his highest score. After losing the game, Duncan returns home, seeing his family packed up for a trip. Kip and Joan invited them over to their boat to hang out. Trent is mad that he left without leaving a note because his mom is worried. Pam requests her son to hurry up and get dressed because they will be late. At the yacht, Trent throws a life jacket at Duncan. The boy catches it but doesn't want to wear those. Trent forces him to do so because he can't swim. However, it's not because Trent wants him safe, but for him not to bother anyone if he falls into the water. Betty and her children also arrive to join them. Even in the boat, Duncan feels like an outcast. Steph and Sasana go to the deck to sunbathe, and the adults make themselves comfy on the couch, enjoying themselves. Meanwhile, Duncan stays in the driver's seat, solely wearing a life jacket. Pam and Trent share their love story with everyone. Trent recalls how he played as a cop to win her heart. Pam finds him cheesy back then, saying he is willing to protect her. It took three months before Pam made it official, amusing Betty. Everyone enjoys the topic except Joan, who keeps glaring at Pam as she shares something about Trent. 
Pam notices her son, all alone, with a miserable face. Duncan feels disgusted seeing Trent kissing his mom. He's trying hard to be sweet in front of everyone. Pam explains his stepdad is making an effort for a complete and happy family with them. Duncan cannot feel it because it doesn't show in his actions. Duncan wishes to spend the summer with his dad but doesn't know why his mom won't allow him. Days pass and Duncan feels neglected by his mom, who indulges in drinking and staying out at night with their neighbors. They even leave a mess in the kitchen and Duncan has no choice but to clean it. The next day, Duncan gets up, hearing giggles in the kitchen. There he finds his drunk parents and their friends eating breakfast. They invite him to eat, but he refuses. Instead, he gets the bicycle and drives to the water whiz. Sasana wonders where he's heading, but she never asks. Duncan arrives at the parking area and locks the pink bicycle. Since he has no money for the entrance, he uses the door for employees to go inside. Duncan sits, watching the resort rides when someone notices him. He is calling him Pac-Man Kid, so he turns to see him. It was the guy at the diner. He is comfortably eating a snack on the balcony like he owns the park. He also asks how the game went, hoping he did not exceed his score. Suddenly, a woman nags at him for taking a break during working hours. There, Duncan realizes he is a staff of Water Wiz. Duncan has no idea about his name yet, but he is funny, defending himself to the hard-working lady on why he took a break. Duncan drives home, seeing Sasana outside. She is teasing him for using a pink vehicle. Sasana talks to him, saying he is right that summer will be too hot. Duncan doesn't reply but drives in circles to listen. There, Sasana shares that she's out of the house, waiting for her dad's call. Her mother hates seeing her on the phone, so she stays near the streets. Duncan can relate because his mom does the same. Eventually, he bids goodbye, and Sasana tells him to share another weather update again next time. Duncan returns the bicycle to the garage. He overhears his mom trying to find him, so he hides. He spent the whole day at the beach until it is dark. Duncan glances at his mom's room. Soon after she turns off the lights, he sneaks into the house. However, Trent, seated in the living area, catches him. He lectured the boy for not leaving a note again, making his mom worry. Trent reminds him to show respect, so that the family he is trying to build with them will work. The next day, Duncan revisits the water park, where he runs into the guy who played Pac-Man at the diner. He is Owen, a water whiz staff who loves violating rules. He is not wearing the employee's shirt and strolling around the park like a boss. He jokes at Duncan to go home because he is having too much fun watching water activities. Duncan takes it seriously, standing up to exit the gates. Owen laughs, saying he is only joking. Owen looks at the boy's old pants suggesting he should wear something suitable for swimming. He brings Duncan to Lewis, the booth staff in charge of clothes and life jacket rentals at the resort. Owen asks him to find the best trunk for Duncan. Lewis shares about a kid throwing up in the crazy tube. Owen never believes him because he sounds like he is joking. Lewis is one of the loyal staff at WaterWiz. Ten years ago, he expressed his intention to quit the job, but he never did. After wearing a swimming trunk, Owen takes Duncan to tour the resort. WaterWiz Waterpark has existed for almost three decades already. The owner swore not to change a thing in the resort. The woman nagging at Owen yesterday walks with them. She is Caitlin, a hard-working staff, unlike Owen. She tells Owen to stop strolling around because a kid puked at the crazy tube. Owen pretends to be surprised even if he doesn't care. Caitlin reminds him to reorder more mats, accomplish the tasks scheduled for next week, and change the filters. Owen sounds confident, telling her he has already accomplished those. However, Caitlin says she will inspect later, making Owen admit he never did a thing. Owen rests his head on Caitlin to make her stop nagging. Soon after she leaves, Owen tells Duncan how Caitlin is madly in love with him. The next stop is the Devil's Peak, the largest waterslide in a 50-mile radius. It's a tube from end to end and measures like 13 football fields in length. Three kids have been dreaming of passing through Devil's Peak, and they are Vladimir, Ishmael, and Ming Li. Those are not their names, but Owen calls them that way. Vladimir asks Owen if it's true that a kid figured out how to overtake someone in the waterslide. Owen says he was there when it happened but never spilled any information. The boys are annoyed at Owen for joking around. They want to know how the kid did it, dreaming of replicating such stunt next time. After the kids leave, Duncan asks Owen if it's true. However, he doesn't answer. A staff manages the load of people in Devil's Peak. He is Rod, Owen's friend, who takes advantage of girls sliding in. Owen instructs Duncan to take a mat because they will go down together. Duncan is extremely happy, laughing when his stomach tingles down the slide. After the impact, Duncan loses his trunk, making Owen laugh hard. Happiness ends because the park is closing early since it's a holiday. At the parking area, Duncan removes the lock of his bicycle when Owen stops by with his convertible car. He offers to drop him off at home. Duncan refuses, but after Owen learns he lives far, he insists. In the end, Duncan agrees and hops in the vehicle. While driving, Owen wonders why the boy frequently visits the park when he has all the ocean in the backyard. It's the only place Duncan feels happy, but he does not tell Owen. Duncan learns that the man has worked as a staff since he was a kid. This explains why he is too relaxed and unbothered at work. 
After dropping Duncan off, Owen asks him if he is free every day. He wants to offer him odd jobs at the park if he wants to. Duncan smiles and accepts the offer. Owen tells him that work starts at 9 a.m. the next day, and he is looking forward to his presence. Duncan runs into his mom at the door. She is holding a fruit, saying Betty is hosting a small get-together. She gets curious about the guy he is with earlier. He is too old to be hanging out with him. Duncan tells her it's only a friend, Owen. Pam suspects Owen is a bad influence on her son. She tells Duncan to bring him to the house next time, so she can get to know him. Before she forgets, Pam lectures her son to stop staying up all night and disappear all day. Duncan answers that there is no difference between what she does, drinking all night and day. Pam is speechless, realizing he is right. She invites him to come at Betty's and eat something. Pam arrives at Betty's, meeting the couple Kip and Joan and other drunkard friends. Steph calls Susanna to sit with them, but she won't listen. Duncan arrives to see Susanna on the balcony. Surprisingly, she smiles at him but not at Steph. Betty notices Duncan's presence and tells him to play with Peter, which she believes to be hiding under the table. Pam asks his son if he wants her to get him some food. Duncan refuses because he can do it himself. Betty suggests that Duncan should get clams because it's freshly picked from the sea earlier. While Duncan gets food, he also talks to Peter, who is busy playing with his Star Wars action figures. He also hears Sasana discouraging him from getting clams because they poison many. Duncan still gets some so as not to hurt Betty's feelings, but he will not eat those for Sasana. Suddenly, the adults head to the beach, including Pam. Duncan is hurt because his mom will leave him again. It has not even been an hour when they talked and she disappeared again. Duncan dumps the food, dismayed by his mom. Susanna feels sorry for Duncan, so she invites him to walk along the shore to find ghost crabs with Peter. Susanna entertains Duncan to make him feel better. She shares how her dad used to bring her to the shore to find ghost crabs too. However, he has already left them and lives far away. Susanna feels she's the only one doing the talk, thinking Duncan is annoyed by her. She is wrong because Duncan loves her company. He is concerned about his mom acting like a teen, going out at night, since they arrived at the beach house. Under the colorful fireworks, Susanna shares about her mom. She feels that her dad leaving them is not what hurt Betty, but it is when he found another girl while she is still single and miserable. Duncan can relate because his dad also met a new girl, younger than his mom. Despite everything, Duncan doesn't hate his dad. He plans to visit San Diego someday if his mom permits him. Duncan and Susanna enjoy their deep talks but decide to return home since it's already late. Duncan sees his mom having fun with friends. He looks around since Trent is not there. Suddenly, Duncan trembles, seeing Trent and Joan at the side of the house. They are both drunk and kissing. Trent pulls away and returns to his girlfriend as if nothing happened. Pam wonders why he only brought marshmallows after almost consuming an hour. Trent explains that Joan is carrying the rest. Joan walks tipsy, fixing her hair. At that moment, Pam suspects something is going on between them. However, she remains composed and does not confront Trent about this. Likewise, Duncan chooses not to tell his mom about Trent cheating. The next day, Duncan arrives late at work. Good thing Owen also violates rules, so it is not a big deal. He gives the boy an employee shirt they use at work. Duncan gladly accepts it, feeling like a regular staff of the park. Seeing Owen dancing makes Duncan feel better despite the problems at home. Lewis, on the other hand, complains about the t-shirt design and suggests making a new one because it makes him conscious of his body. Caitlin arrives, informing Owen there's a situation at the Harpoon Lagoon. Owen looks bothered and checks on it. Everyone leaves Lewis, but the old man is thankful to be only assigned to the booth. It is rarely visited by people, less stressful in general. They find group of dancers placing cardboard on the concrete for a break dance. Caitlin has no idea where they came from. Rod says they got the cardboard from a local store and headed there to perform. They observe them, making Owen bothered by the dangerous stunts they do. It's dangerous, especially since the guests are flocking around to watch. They must stop them, and Owen instructs Duncan to get the cardboard. Caitlin doubts the group will listen to the young boy. However, Owen is confident he can do that. He trusts Duncan more than himself. Anyway, he is wearing the staff's uniform, so he has the authority to stop them. Duncan is nervous since it's his first day at work, and the job is heavy for an introverted boy like him. Regardless, he dares to walk through the congested crowd. Duncan stops the music, making the group's leader furious. The guests are also mad at him for interrupting the moment. Duncan asks permission to get the cardboard. The leader allows him but on one condition, show them his moves. Duncan conquers his fears, performing in public. He dances awkwardly, but he continues because people cheer him. The dance group leader stops him, telling him he can get the cardboard. However, a member offers to teach him basic dance steps, seeing his potential. Duncan accepts the challenge. He follows her movements, making Owen proud. His dedication at work is admirable, doing everything for his job. Crowd cheers as Duncan grooves to the music. They call him a pop and lock guy for slaying pop and locking moves. In the end, the dance group leader allows him to remove the cardboard. 
Duncan is floating in air with the fulfillment he feels himself. He confidently walks to Owen and the other staff to surrender the cardboard. Days pass by, and Duncan does his best at the water park with Owen's guidance. He gets his first salary, and the staff is extremely happy for him. Duncan works daily, keeping it a secret from his mom, who is busy indulging in alcohol and night outs. Duncan becomes confident and is now assigned to the Devil's Peak, taking Rod's shift. Duncan is managing a load of people to slide when the three stubborn boys, Vladimir, Ishmael, and Ming Li, arrive. The three of them jump to the slide without waiting for his signal. At first, their excitement can be heard, but later on, it turns into an alarming scream. Their mats fell to the pool, but not their bodies. Vladimir, Ishmael, and Ming Li screamed for help because they were stuck in the curved part of the slide. Duncan whistles, requesting a rescue. Owen and Rod rush to the peak, checking on the problem. Duncan tells them the kids jumped together without his signal. Owen shouts to the tube to communicate with them. The boys confirm they are stuck and they need help. The three of them blame each other for violating safety rules. Owen shouts to the people lining up at the pool. He asks for someone strong and brave to save the kids. Someone offers to help, named Malcolm. He is a chubby guy, so Owen warns the boys to brace themselves for a strong impact. Rod and Owen push Malcolm to the tube. Everyone awaits them at the pool, including Owen and Caitlin. They did. Malcolm is able to save them. Owen welcomes Vladimir, Ishmael, and Ming Li, instead of lecturing them. This pisses off Caitlin because they should be punished for violating the safety rules of the park. Owen disagrees, telling her there's no need to do that. Instead, they should be thankful that the kids are alive. His reply made Caitlin furious. If Owen continues his attitude, she will not be surprised that the park closes. After Caitlin walks out, Duncan apologizes to Owen for not guarding the slide well. Owen stops him from explaining because it's not his fault. After the incident, a series of rainy days take place, and no one visits the resort. The silent water park concerns Owen. He is not used to watching the pool and slides empty from the view of his apartment. He remembers Caitlin yesterday saying the water park will definitely close under his lenient management. In the same manner, Duncan looks lonely sitting in the living area with his family. The water park is the only place that makes him happy, but no guests visit there when raining. Pam suggests rainy days mean a family bonding at home. Trent agrees, saying they should watch movies together, then invite over Kip and Joan. Hearing Joan's name makes Pam recall him cheating the last time. She has not yet confronted him, so Trent has no idea she knows. Pam disagrees with Trent, saying she doesn't feel like hanging out with Kip and Joan. She shows them the Candy Land board to play with. At first, they are all excited about choosing their character. Not until Trent triggers Pam's anger because of a small reason. The two of them argue about the game rules, making Pam furious. Her anger is also not just about the game but also about Trent's cheating. She becomes irritable and walks out. Duncan would have no idea if his mom knew about Trent and Joan. He is reluctantly telling her, knowing she will be hurt. The next day, Duncan goes to Waterwiz because the weather is fine. Susanna, who sees him every morning with the pink bicycle, follows him. There, she learns Duncan works at Waterwiz. The moment Duncan enters the park, he cannot contain his happiness. Surprisingly, Owen is wiping the chairs, which he skips most of the time. Owen is surprised he came, even if it's his day off. Duncan offers a hand since he was not able to work yesterday. Caitlin arrives, but she's not mad at Owen anymore. She bursts laughing, seeing his shirt worn on the wrong side. Guests start to arrive at Waterwiz. While Duncan arranges the chair horizontally, Sasana startles him. Duncan asks how she knew he worked at the park. Sasana admits following him earlier. She returned home after, then went back to the park to see him. Sasana learns his mom doesn't know about him working. Their conversation is interrupted when Rod and Owen tease Duncan. Owen announces at the mic to call Duncan's attention. Duncan insists they are only friends, and she is older than him. However, Rod and Owen are not convinced. They congratulate the boy for catching a pretty girl. Duncan entertains Sasana at the park by watching the different slides. Duncan has become popular with girls at the water park, calling him a pop and lock guy. After having a meal, Duncan returns to work while Sasana stays by his side. One of Duncan's odd jobs is to remove things in the locker, like stinky undergarments and socks. Duncan cleans the mess after the guests are gone. It's already late, but Sasana accompanies him in arranging things until the water park is set for the opening the next day. Steph envies the two for hanging out without her. Sasana is surprised because she did not say they had plans. Steph requests her to be by her side because there's so much going on in her life. Duncan notices the parking lot is empty. His mom also looks lonely, telling them dinner is ready. Duncan bids goodbye to Sasana to go inside. The family waits for Trent before eating. Hours pass by but never return, so Pam tells the kids to start eating. Pam overhears Steph earlier, confessing to Sasana she's lonely. She asks the lady how things are going on between her and Chad. Steph stutters, sharing they already broke up. Pam apologizes for hearing that and comforts her. While Pam washes the dishes, Steph offers to help, happy about cheering her earlier. In the middle of the night, Duncan hears Trent and her mom arguing. Trent insists he only stayed all day at Kip's boat, and he lost track of time. He did not call, concerned about waking her up. Pam starts crying, forcing Trent to tell her everything she must know. Trent swears he is not keeping a secret. 
He hugs Pam, assuring her all is fine. Duncan eavesdrops behind the wall. He is teary, watching his mom hurt and recalling Trent's cheating. The next day, Trent goes to the kitchen and sees Pam in a good mood. She believes Trent's explanation for arriving late last night. Duncan's blood boils for his mom playing blind to Trent's behavior. Duncan walks away and bumps into Trent. He is greeting him good morning, but Duncan is too furious to respond respectfully. Another night of partying. Pam and Betty sit together with Duncan, Susanna, and Steph. Betty is talking behind Joan's back for only ordering food for a party. Joan arrives, apologizing for being late. She pulls Trent to the dance floor, making Pam uncomfortable. Kip joins the table where Betty asks him to host another party on his boat. Kip would love to but apologizes because his boat's motor has been damaged for more than weeks already. He will start repairing it once the parts arrive. Pam freezes, hearing that Kip's boat is not working. Trent says last night they went boating together. She trembles, confused about everything. Her mind says Trent is cheating, but her heart wants to keep him. Pam is teary and excuses herself before everyone notices. As a son, Duncan knows what his mom feels. Joan and Trent dance too close, but Pam chooses to be silent. In the middle of the party's venue, Duncan tells his mom to do something about Trent's cheating. He speaks so loudly that everyone looks at them. Trent and Joan seem guilty, but Trent tries to stop Duncan. However, Duncan is furious, and no one can stop him from fighting for his mom. Duncan pushes Trent. Good thing Kip is there to protect Duncan from Trent's punch. Unable to convince his mom to confront Trent and Joan, Duncan walks away. Susanna finds Duncan at the shore. She tries comforting him by sharing that she talked to her dad yesterday. His dad is delighted to hear they went searching for ghost crabs. Duncan feels better because of Susanna's presence. He leans at her, initiating a kiss. Susanna is surprised and stops him. Embarrassed, Duncan apologizes and runs away. Duncan seems lost, not knowing where to go. At Betty's home, he overhears Trent apologizing. He admits he cheated but plays like a victim for Pam to forgive him. Duncan is teary out of pity for his mom for giving another chance to a man breaking her heart. Suddenly, Peter, who is under the balcony playing action figures, shouts Duncan's name. Duncan hides before his mom sees him. Pam hears someone calling her son, so she looks around the porch to see if he is there. Peter pleads with Duncan to take him anywhere. Duncan refuses because it's already late. Eventually, he agrees after Peter threatens to shout his name again. Duncan takes him to the water whiz on his pink bike. The water park is already closed, so Duncan climbs the fences to get in. Owen arrives, telling him he wastes energy because the gate is open. Owen invites the two to get inside. Duncan is confused, but he follows after seeing his co-workers going inside. The water whiz staff are throwing farewell party for Lewis. He filed a resignation telling everyone he was serious this time. Owen introduces Duncan and his pirate friend. Peter wears an eye patch, and Owen thinks it is a costume. While everyone is having fun, Peter tries to sneak a can of beer, but Owen sees him. There, Duncan introduces the little boy to Owen. Peter is a confident and funny kid, making Owen adore him at their first meet. Owen wonders why he is wearing a patch. Peter's face turns lonely, sharing his mom forces him to cover his eye because it confuses people. Owen gets curious and asks if he can see his eye. Peter shows it, but Owen doesn't make fun of him. He finds it cool and cheers up the boy for having rare eyes. Peter feels good about himself because of Owen's compliment. Peter asks him if he can join the adult party. Owen does not think twice and permits him. After the kid leaves, Owen asks Duncan the reason he came. Duncan tells him something happened at home, forcing him to visit his happy place. He does not explain it further, but Owen gets it. Duncan gets pizza to share with Rod and Owen. They watch everyone getting wild while dancing. Owen decides it's time for Lewis to have the floor and say something. Suddenly, Rod asks Duncan if he wants to be part of a tradition. The boy nods yes, so Rod leads him to get something. Lewis thanked everyone for making his last day memorable. At first, he has no idea what to say but then recalls the great memories he shared with other employees at the water park. Before he gets emotional, Duncan targets him with a water gun. Rod serves as a backup who also enjoys firing him. Lewis protects himself, but Rod pushes a box containing more water guns. Everyone grabs one, targeting each other. After the water gun tradition, they spent the night dancing. More energetic this time because of liquor. Lewis did not miss the opportunity to dance with them. He showcases his moves, entertaining everyone. Meanwhile, Duncan's eyes are fixed on the bulletin board with pinned pictures of Water Whiz staff. He sees a picture of himself, and he can't explain the fulfillment he feels in being part of a family. The family who gives him a real home. Owen apologizes to Caitlin. He admits he is an immature staff. Caitlin laughs, asking for forgiveness because she was frustrated that day. Caitlin is supposed to work only in the summer, but she is currently in her three years at the park. She has poured all her efforts into keeping the place organized. That's why she exploded seeing Owen chilling in the middle of an accident. Owen promises it won't happen again and kisses her forehead after. Duncan is happy from afar, seeing them reconcile. The party is over, but Duncan remains at the park. Owen wonders why so he asks him. Duncan tells him he would love to stay there forever. Owen laughs, thinking he is joking. Duncan says he is serious because the water park is the only place that makes him happy. Owen stops smiling, realizing it's not the time to joke around. 
He advises the boy to let go of the idea of settling at the park because the world offers more. At that moment, Duncan shares how he hates his mom's boyfriend. He rates him as three, which he finds rude. Owen comforts the man saying Trent did that because he doesn't know him well. He encourages him to go on his path, not listening to Trent or anyone else. Owen shares that his father is also like Trent. He is against his life choices, and forcing rules that are way beyond his reach. That is why Owen doesn't follow the rules, even wearing an employee's shirt. In the end, Owen hugs Duncan, telling him he is not alone. Duncan and Peter return home. Betty is mad at Peter for disappearing all night without asking permission. Meanwhile, Duncan finds all their luggage outside. Trent greets him, telling him they are leaving early to start a new life. He requests him to forget about last night and think of it as if it never happened. Steph glares at Duncan, blaming him for ruining her summer vacation. Duncan finds his mom also packing her things. He wonders why they need to go with Trent after all he did. Pam is emotional, saying they need to leave to protect the family. She also tells him he is too young to understand everything. Betty hugs Pam, motivating her to be strong because she is a great woman. Meanwhile, Susanna and Duncan bid goodbye to each other for the last time. Susanna kisses him, making Duncan's heart melt. All is set, so Trent starts driving. Meanwhile, Betty and Susanna stayed on the road until they could not see their vehicle. They pass by Water Whiz, making Duncan emotional. Trent stops by at the gasoline station nearby so Duncan has a chance to look at the Devil's Peak for the last time. However, he feels that the park is calling him. Duncan runs to Water Whiz, worrying about his mother. Meanwhile, Trent is pissed off at Duncan, delaying their long trip. Duncan casually tells Owen he will return home. The boy also announces this to other staff. Duncan tells Owen he wants to pass him at Devil's Peak. The three kids, Vladimir, Ishmael, and Ming Li, get thrilled. They climb to the slide, announcing to everyone that the pop and lock guy will try overtaking Owen in the tube. People flock around Devil Peak to witness an exciting event. Meanwhile, Pam sees her son's photo tagged as the best employee. At that moment, she realized it was why Duncan was gone all day. Pam regrets drinking all night instead of spending time with her son during the vacation. She feels proud even if Duncan does not mention he is working. Rod feels nervous about Duncan doing the most difficult stunt on the slide. Meanwhile, Vladimir, Ishmael, and Ming Li cannot wait to see if Duncan can make it. Owen jumps first, followed by Duncan. The crowd cheers, creating an exciting atmosphere. Pam is also excited for his son, awaiting his landing on the pool. Everyone could see their shadows passing the tube, but they could not tell if Duncan already passes Owen. All eyes are at the end of the tube because they are almost near. People scream, seeing Duncan successfully overtake Owen. Pam applauds, proud of Duncan. She is still processing that her son impresses everyone. Owen raises Duncan's hands, telling everyone he is the first man to pass someone on a slide. The curious kids, Vladimir, Ishmael, and Ming Li, ask Owen how it becomes possible. Duncan and Owen only laugh at them, not disclosing their trick. Duncan introduces Owen to his mom. The man she suspects is a bad influence, but the one who motivated her son to go on his way. Trent interrupts, trying to pull Duncan back to the car. Good thing Owen is there to protect the boy. Trent leaves, feeling embarrassed by Owen. Duncan asks his mom to give him a minute before leaving. Pam agrees, letting him say goodbye to his friends. Caitlin, Rod, and Lewis lines up to wish him well. Yes, Lewis is still working in the park. He changes his mind after the farewell party. Duncan cannot look at Owen's eyes because he is teary. He failed to say a word, so he just hugged him tightly. Inside the car, Pam realizes she can also stand up for herself like what her son did. She climbs to the way way back of the car where Duncan is sitting. Trent calls her, but she never listens. This time, Pam wants to live the life she wants, unbothered by him. 